Max, one of the extraordinary claims of quantum physics is that the way the world could be are the so-called Everett many worlds, where at every moment of quantum decision point, the world branches into the, this enormous uh, 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 constellation of worlds driven by the wave function, not collapsing, but every probability is expressed in some crazy way. So it seems that the number of worlds become astronomically absurd. Do you believe in many worlds of quantum physics? I certainly believe that these many worlds are real for the simple reason that we've seen in the laboratory that elementary particles can be in several places at once. And I am made of elementary particles. So that means I too should be able to be in two places at once. And you can do the math and figure out that the way that will feel is as if there is a max who thinks he's here, and another Max who thinks he's there, who are completely unaware of each other. So if we have these branches, which is an incredible concept to begin with, but if I grant you that, how often does it occur? For example, in my brain, and my consciousness, how often will these worlds be branching? This splitting that Hugh Everett talked about, the parallel worlds, happens extremely rapidly, more than trillions of times per second. But it's important to remember that Nothing is splitting at a very fundamental level, where there is just one wave function, as we call it, a single point in this high dimensional space called a Hilbert space, which is just moving around causally, deterministically, according to the Schrodinger equation. And it's only subjectively to us self-aware observers that we perceive this, this splitting. Whenever I end up being in two different places at once, each of my copies will feel that something random happened. And what this means is that the kind of like in George Orwell's Animal Farm, where they said that some animals are more equal than mm -hmm. others. Ultimately, some of these worlds are more equal than others, have a sort of greater level of, of reality than others. And we have a formula for that in quantum mechanics. There's also a different way you can transform the math to make things more symmetric. But the, the important point for what we're talking about here is that actually it's just not true that, that there, in some sense, is more and more reality over time, the total amount of quantum reality actually always stays the same. Because of that, we should not be, um, for example, shocked that we, there are going to be a lot of split versions in the future. Um, it, um, but if we're at a point now, and if we go forward, th there's more possibilities. Each one has their own past. Right. But you're saying it's, it's, at some point in, in, in space-time, they all exist? Every possibility that ever was or ever will be trillions of times a second, they all exist at, in a fixed four-dimensional space-time or whatever, n-dimensional Hilbert space or whatever? This uh, splitting business has actually come in a fascinating new light now, thanks to uh, Alan Guth and other pioneers of cosmology and people studying what happened in the early universe. Because it might very well be that our entire state of affairs here is in a quantum superposition of a whole bunch of universes that are 13.8 billion years old like ours and then a whole bunch of universes that are 13.9 billion years old and and 13.7 and so on so that at any one instant if you just look at what's going on in the quantum reality you actually have universes of all different ages and that makes clear that you're not getting ultimately more sort of kind of things happening. And we have a nesting later. going on here, though. You have the quantum many worlds, and each in, in, in each of those worlds there could be cosmological inflation in multiple universes. I mean, there's a nesting of universes if you believe these multiple universes. The quantum world is, is a world, but in that it's a total world that may have an uh, um, um, infinite number of pocket universes in each one of those. That's right. The quantum reality of the level 3 multiverse is huge, mind-bogglingly huge. But it's still, I think, ultimately finite. And uh, what that would mean but is does that... does it increase over time as we would perceive it, or is it fixed uh, in, in, some, uh, uh, in some heavenly uh, dimensional space? I think it's ultimately fixed in the full reality of the Hilbert space. But in any one branch, which is all we know about right now, uh, during a period of time when things are ordered and we seem to have an arrow of time going in right, a certain right, direction, right. we perceive as things branching. But if we wait long enough, a lot of these realities are going to start coming together again and probably the whole 
notion of time as we know it is going to dissolve into some sort of quantum fuzz. And that might also have been what happened if we rewound to the very earliest moments of our universe. Because after all, time is something which we can only make easy sense of if we have any sort of clock system, any mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. pendulum or periodic repeating thing. If you end up in the future in some giant mess where there's just random motions and nothing repeating, the whole flow of time would end with a bit of a whimper and it would seem much less shocking then to think of many of these realities of having re-emerged. Re Here's a again. refutation that I want to offer you of, uh, of, of many worlds. Certainly the number of worlds that have me in them will increase as I get older because there are more states of me that have its own past as I get older, however many there are. And if this continues to go that way, and if there are trillions of times a second, the amount of worlds that are, exist a few minutes or seconds before my death are vastly more than the ones that are in my early life. And so if I were to believe the normal principle of mediocrity, that I'm, I, I am where I am most likely to be, it's most likely to be right before my death, if there are many worlds, I'm not dying right now happily, so there are no many worlds. This doomsday paradox, which is a beautiful and powerful one, I think ultimately does not apply to the quantum situation because the mathematics of quantum mechanics also says that these different worlds have a, each have a sort of level of existence, which you can mathematically quantify by looking at this, this wave function. And even though you get more of them, they start existing a little bit less each so that the total amount adds up and you actually should not be surprised to be at any one age. I think a better refuta refutation of the many worlds will be if we can actually build a really large machine, for example, a putative quantum computer, and discover that it doesn't work because there is some mysterious effect in there that actually violates the Schrodinger equation. We were planning for it to do all these wonderful things. It doesn't. We check very carefully everything we've built, make sure there's no decoherence influence from the environment or anything else. And we see there's some new physics here, which actually is violating the basic equation of quantum mechanics. Then many worlds is dead. And this means it's also testable.